What's going on guys? It is a rainy, windy morning in Atlanta. It's very interesting what is starting to happen. People are starting to ask this question, when is he going to jail? A lot of people are asking that question. Y'all keep singing and y'all keep singing. He keeps making videos. He keeps making out content. When is he going to jail? understand a lot of stuff they just don't and what I am finding out is the happier than I am the more successful that I am the more that it burns their buttons on their shirts they're just like ah ah oh ah. you know being happy and successful is the best revenge it's the best revenge ever and i don't know what's going on with my light because it's kind of windy so we may have to leave this party all right let's see all right because it's a little windy it's a little windy. All right, that's a little bit better. So I was out yesterday doing my thing and I ran into a group of guys and we start chasing it up. It is, you know, if anyone is recognizing me from this whole episode, no one's letting on. No one has come up to me except there was this one dude, he looked like he wanted to say something, but I was sitting down and then I stood up and then he went away. I am six foot one, 250. I'm not a little dude. And people normally just don't walk up to me talking crazy. So let's talk about your happiness. Let's talk about you guys being successful because there's more lessons to be learned here. Here's a lot of lessons because uh, one of the things that I am beginning to understand about human nature is a lot of people are feeling out. So all of these folks who are descending on all of my channels talking smack aren't haters. Bullshit. I am better looking, I am more successful, I have more money than me. So you have to the folks who are looking to I drive a Porsche, I drive a BMW, I have a Mercedes, I live in a high rise, a fancy high rise. I'm living a damn good life. And for the miserable and the mentally impotent, woo, that's just too much. I'm, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. Years and years ago, and I'm not really proud of this, I used to be a hater. Um, I don't think I ever shared this story before. I actually hated the fact that Michael Jordan was so good. I was like, well, Mike, you know, I was such a hater. Because, see, when, you're, when you get into that hater space, it's beyond logic. It's, it's deeply, 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 deeply,
we're coming to you. That that was the fight. man cannot control his basic primal desires can't do it see when you learn how to control yourself when you learn how to operate like I'll give you an example when I was in the storage auction business the beginning was very very rough uh, they used to play with me they used to do all types of stuff they used to um, do crazy stuff, right? They used to really, really mess with me, mess with my money, and create a very harsh situation where it was hard for me to operate. It was hard for me to make money. So what happened was, I had to, I had to acclimate. I had to learn how to actually do storage auctions. I, I had to, whew, man. One of the things, and I'm, I'm doing all this on the fly. <laughs> I'm not editing in this out at all. There we go. One of the things that I had to do was this thing I call holding the line. I had to stay focused. I had to stay disciplined. I had to push through my personal discomfort. Because the first few months, they were playing games, they were running me up, and I just stuck with it, and I stuck with it, and I stuck with it. Now, this is a very important thing that I'm telling you guys. Many of you are going to enroll in the new Hustlers University, and many of you are going to start businesses. And let me tell you what's going to happen. The beginning is going to be rough. You want to know why it's going to be rough? You've never done it before. And the expectation we live in a culture of hype rent seeking and we have people who want to have the accoutrements of successful people without the work the sacrifice and putting in the time and effort because i remember my first year the storage auction business First six months were really, really rough. I bought a bunch of junk. I made virtually no money, but I stuck with it and I stuck with it and I stuck with it. And this is your pathway to happiness. I know you're like, Glendon, wait a minute. So I gotta do some stuff that sucks to be happy? Yeah, you actually do. Because your happiness is predicated on what you're willing to do to have the life that you want. Let me give you an example. First six months of the storage auction business was super, super rough. And I remember, I remember that first big boy unit I bought. I remember, because I, I kept, you know, I'm a social scientist, I've, I've been this way my whole life. And I, was just um, on point, I was on point where I was watching the people on the storage auction trail. I was watching them and it was just like, 
These guys consistently buy units. They have stores. So first thing I had to do was get me a, a store. Uh, what happened, if you were part of Latonia, the Latonia flea market, we started off with one booth and the, by the second six months, we had 22 booths in the Latonia flea market. And we were moving about two to $3,000 worth of merchandise at the Latonia flea market a week. And there were some limitations with the Latonia flea market because when you buy storage units, they give you a time limit to get these things out. And we kept bumping into that because I would go, I would have a truck, I would have a load, and the Latonia flea market would be closed. So this necessitated us to getting our first store space. But as we went on, because I kept working and kept working, kept working, kept working. And I remember I got that first good unit, that really good unit. I spent like $540. It was full from the Ruta to the Tuda. And I literally pulled out maybe 10% and I made my 500 bucks back. And that other 90% was pure profit. And then this is how I learned how to buy storage units. But I had to suffer. I had to level up. I had to go through it because I remember I bought that unit and we you know, our, it took us about two weeks to sell everything. And I remember walking into the Latonia flea market and seeing empty booth, empty booth, empty booth, empty booth, empty booth. And I just smiled because we were, we were, you know, we were turning, we were bringing it in because I walked in and I, I drove the truck and the truck was full. So I walked in and I was like, okay, so I'm gonna put this in this booth and this in this booth. And um, I just started smiling because I went up to the front because they had a situation where they could sell stuff for you if you weren't there. And then I went up front, I had 1200 bucks. I was like, yeah, 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 this is gonna work. And what happened was after we went ahead and we got our first rental spot, huh, they hit the door. We got our first rental spot. Um, we really started to go hard and heavy on Craigslist. And what I'm telling you guys, <clears throat> to all you guys who are going to get into the new training, it's going to be tough in the beginning. Oh, it's just going to be tough. And I know there are many people on the Internet are telling you to start a business easy. You're, the money's just going to roll in. You don't have to do that much. Uh, I'm here to tell you something a little different. I'm here to tell you the truth. And what I'm here to tell you is when you go through this and you come through the other side, the happiness that you will experience will be mind blowing because when you do hard things and then you're successful, this raises your confidence level. This raises your self esteem. This raises your level of happiness with you. See, this is why I am such a confident person. Many people like you're arrogant. You're cocky. And to those weak, moist men, I say, no, I'm not. I'm just accomplished. I can look back on my life, especially the last 22 years, and I can be happy. I can like, I did this, I built this from scratch. There was nothing, I got it out the dirt. I built stuff. Right now, <clears throat> I'm getting ready to build another training platform, themasculineframe.com. Well, it will be once I get the URL hooked up, but I, I'm building, man. I'm building. And what's going to happen? Like, let's talk about the, the current situation, which is tamping way down. 
pretty much. I predicted that this thing was going to tamp down and there's a few people who are trying to keep it going because they don't have anything else to do. But eventually, <clears throat> you know, um, I don't even get the dislikes over at Savage Money and it's starting to tamp down. There's a few people who are just coming around because you know why they're hanging around? They want to see me fall. They want to see me crumble. They want to see me cry. Oh, God, see me no steps. Fuck those people. Fuck those people. That's my um, thoughts because see, during this whole period, what did I do? I went to work. I kept working. And what's gonna happen is probably end of November, December, no one's gonna even be talking about this. And this, there will be a certain group of people the perpetually miserable, the perpetually unlucky, the perpetually unfortunate, they're going to keep wishing for me to fall. They're going to be praying for it because that one coming. We're coming to get you. I'm like, really? OK, I carry a gun. So come on. Come on, player. You get a bullet in the middle of your skull. Let's see how, how that works out for you. Most folks can't take that kind of hit, but guys, we're, we're getting ready to do some great stuff. What I anticipate, and remember when I was doing this experiment, I, on the lead attorney show, I said, we'll see in six months. See, when you do experiments, all this short term stuff isn't enough time to really collect the data. So I went ahead, I, I did lose, 300 subscribers at Savage Money. I did lose 500 subscribers over here. I gained 1,600 subscribers. I gained 1,000 subscribers over at the Lost Kings. And it has really slowed down and a lot of people are starting to come back. Kind of what happened with Fresh and Fit. They lost a bunch of subscribers and now they're back right where they were. So. One of the things I wanted to do with this experiment was to push myself and create some drama because, you know, um, one person who remained nameless, they jumped on this opportunity and I'm going to make that person look like a damn fool in the coming months. Because one of the things that you guys have to understand, successful people can weather the storms. And, you know, it's raining. It was raining a little bit. It's raining out there. It's kind of crazy. But I want you guys to really look at what I have shown you. I've shown you the receipts. I've shown you the ATM receipts. I've shown you the corporate papers. I've shown you the cars. I've shown you this three bedroom high rise apartment. I've shown you receipts. And what have you noticed since I've come on YouTube every year? I go up a little higher every year. I go up a little higher now, just like in the storage auction business last year was like a jackpot year for me. Most money I ever made in one year in my life. Most money. Um, I made, if I was an average person, I could have threw that money in the stock market and been retired. Easy, easy, but Here's the thing. Luxuries once tasted become necessities, right? So last year I bought my first Porsche and I really like it. And what's going to happen going forward is this luxurious lifestyle that I'm living because I live a very luxurious lifestyle. I live in this dope ass apartment. I drive a Porsche, a BMW, a Mercedes. I get to do what I want to do every day with my time. I live a very luxurious lifestyle. What's going to happen is that's going to go up. That's going to go up because right now I am dating. Got a date tonight. And what's probably going to happen is one of them is going to become the, the main girlfriend. And we're going to start to build and we're going to start to create and we're going to start to cook. And 
it's just going to get better and better and better and better. Now, I am doing this while I have all of these never do wells, non accomplished people who are losers, broke ass busters, moist men. All of my, they're, all they're doing is this. They're just talking. Because that, that whole comment, we're coming to get you. I'm like, you saw me in person, you would run. You would run, just like this punk did earlier this week. And <clears throat> talk is cheap. As you guys know, I'm all about taking action. Taking action. I show you what I'm doing. Like I saw in the comments, he said he was going to move. He moved. A lot of people will say they're going to do something and they never do it. They never do it. So I'm an action taker. I can realize my dreams. And there are many people right now because I'm, I'm like the comments are cracking me up. It's like, when is he going to jail? Y'all keep saying he's going to jail. When is he? He, he seems to be happier than ever key point happier than ever because it is so funny that I did not launch uh, a, um, a hit back campaign like all these people who are making these videos I did not spend my time over there because see that would have been wasted time and time is the most precious resource you have. Time is the only luxury that you have. And if I had to dedicate my time over here dealing with the dum-dums of the internet versus being over here making money, building platforms, running my businesses, thinking about new businesses. See, over here, there's money. There's money. Over here, there's a loss of money. And this is why I say a lot of these people who are making these videos on TikTok and YouTube, they're going to get globally reset because there was one, this dude was in this busted ass apartment and he was, and there was dude with this old raggedy car and they're talking all this smack, right? In the road where there's a lot of stuff that's coming out that he's a fake millionaire. And I was going to um, start some shine. Then one of the dudes I was going to direct some traffic to, he made a video about me. And then he retagged me this morning. I don't know why these people want my attention so bad. And I'm just like, oh, I was about to send some traffic your way. Never mind. Never mind. So I'm not going to leave that alone because I'm going to keep working on building, creating my corporate citizens. The corporate citizen creed is still in effect, but now. And I saw it in the comments, the corporate papers is a little bit too complex for most people. I understand that now. So the training that's going to happen at Hustler University is going to be very user friendly. Because here's the thing. I'm going to give you some stuff that you can actually do. I've been studying Dave Ramsey for many, many months and the baby steps. There's a lot of people who are critical of Dave Ramsey, but Dave Ramsey's secret sauce is the baby steps or something that people can do. And once again, that's why he's so successful. Dave Ramsey's worth 50 million bucks. He's worth 50 million bucks because he's created training and information that the average person can do. I, I'm learning from Dave Ramsey. So what's gonna happen with Hustlers Kung Fu is you're gonna get training that you can do. And the first training this is this Sunday. Once again, um, we're probably gonna, like this is what's gonna happen. We're gonna have the beginner training Sunday. And during the week, we're gonna have an intermediate and advanced training for people who have businesses who can absorb these, co these concepts, right? And what I'm learning from Dave Ramsey, because here, here's the thing, and this is one of the things that I don't get enough credit from all my stuff is organic when I was in the storage auction business one of the most frustrating things that happened would I would buy a unit and it would be full of good stuff and it would and it'd be gone 
here's the thing. When I make my own product and it's good, I don't run out of supply. I don't think you guys understand the power of intellectual property. I don't think you really understand. Like, it, it's just amazing the things that you can do and that you can build. And all of my stuff is organic. I built this from scratch. I got it out the dirt. And I, none of, can the robe wearing fool do what I've done? No, he cannot. He can't do it. He don't even understand this. And I feel that from that first listening of Earl Nightingale, that put me on the path to get here. Because guys, I live in a dope ass apartment. I drive a Porsche, I drive a BMW, I drive a Mercedes. Some days I was like, what am I gonna drive today? I'm gonna drive the Porsche, I'm gonna drive the SUV. That's my decision. I, I, I wake up and I'm like, what am I gonna drive today? What am I gonna work on today? What's gonna happen? And I'm gonna show you guys, it's gonna get even better. It's going to get even better because I understand just like me deleting comments, man, they got so mad when I deleted their little funky comments and I'm going to keep deleting comments and I'm going to keep cussing fools out. But you think they're mad now? You think they're mad now? Wait until next year when I have, because more than likely, um, I'm probably going to move up to the penthouse. So I got to stay here six months up to a year. If I stay a year, I can just transfer without a transfer fee. So we will see. We will see because um, I want to be penthouse on this side. I'm going to ask him about that. I'm going to ask him when are these people leaving or if they're leaving or if they're staying. But guys, it's going to get better. You want to know why it's going to get better? Because I'm going to make it better. I'm going to make it better. See what the perpetually stupid and it's like they're calling you out. Who's calling me out? These folks are not my peers. They're not a group of my peers. I don't have that many peers. There's literally a small segment of the country that is a peer of mine. These folks are nobodies. They don't have shit going on. All they can do is come to the internet. And once again, I've been in this building two weeks and not one person has recognized me or said anything to me about this. That should tell you something. Most of the people on the internet like drama and messy. You know, to O'Shea Duke, Dak, O'Shea Duke Jackson, He's tried to put out a lot of solid content, but the celebrity junk is the thing that took off because black folks like drama. They love drama. And that's what took him off. Because, uh, yep, once again, guys, being happy and successful is the best revenge. It's the best revenge. Because, you know, I'm seeing a lot of stuff and people are shading the story, you know, uh, they keep using the word kids to apply that maybe I'm doing something with little boys. They don't say young women. That is not. But see, that would not get, you know, yeah, an older man likes a young woman. That wouldn't get the traction. So they're intentionally shading the truth. <clears throat> there, it's, it's kind of funny. But we're almost to the end of this. And then we will get back to cooking. We'll get back to creating and well, actually, I never stopped cooking. I never stopped creating. What's going to happen is I feel that one of my channels is going to blow up. After all this, I, I just have a feeling that one of my channels is going to blow up. I mean, like really blow up. And I have a long memory because Alan Roger Curry, Ron Wills, Mr. Lucario, Edward Anderson, and a lot of other folks supported me and I appreciate that. And there were some folks who you would thought were Team Glendon. 
I think were jealous and they jumped on the bandwagon. And there were so many people who thought that I was just going to shrivel up and go away and just, I was gonna run, I was gonna run. I was gonna stop making content. I was just gonna run and let this whole thing blow over. What did I do? I made even more content. I dug in. Cause these people are nobodies and they cannot do anything to me. Like brush up. I'm like, really? I've actually had folks tell me to get off the internet. And I, I was like, you really think you have more power than you actually do, you, you spineless little punk. Because guys, being successful will intrinsically lead to happiness. Because whenever you challenge yourself, whenever you really challenge yourself, you open up new doors you because this is this is why like how many times have i said on disruptive mail if you just walk up and approach women in public you would do much better than online dating i am proving that i met two chicks one in this building and one next door just out and about chatting them up asked them out and i'm providing receipts i'm providing receipts and you got all of these men's channel talking about game and all this other stuff and they ain't providing no receipts. They ain't showing you nothing. I wonder why. So I, I've been saying that for years and years and years. And a lot of you guys are too scared to approach a woman in public. Even in a, this is a, a pandemic. I'm macking in a pandemic. It's a pandemic and I'm macking. I'm meeting people, going on dates. So we're going to get into it. Now, I, probably this Sunday, I'm going to put the, the Grand Slam pack together because there's going to be a lot of training that's coming out and there's going to be what's going to happen at um, B-School for Hustlers. I'm probably going to do the Grand Slam. And the Grand Slam would be everything. You would get corporate papers, you would get the masculine frame, disruptive mail, and you will get um, Hustlers Kung Fu. So I'm gonna put some kind of Grand Slam special together, but you should be starting, if you're a beginner, you should be starting at Hustlers Kung Fu. That should be your origination point. That's where you should be cooking the most. Because guys, I want you to be successful. I want you to be happiness. Look at what happened to me and look at how I responded. You know, the lead attorney show was a bad decision, not because I was scared or ashamed of what I did, is I went into a hostile territory, hostile. I did not know the politics of the lead attorney. If I did know the politics, I never would have went on that show. But once again, I did not run, I did not hide, and this is something that's messing with people. It's like, he should, he, he should get off the internet. His life is over. Really? Says who? I am showing you the power of being an owner. I own all my shit. I own Disruptive Mail. I own Hustlers Kung Fu. I own B-School for Hustlers. Now I own the Masculine Frame. You cannot mess with my platforms. You cannot cancel me. You can't like, I want to speak to the manager. I am the manager, bitch. And fuck you and your silly little concerns. I want you to be able to say the same thing. I want you to build your own platforms. I want you to be able to tell people to go fuck themselves. Because see, this is one of the reasons that I can be, I can say the things I can say on the internet. I can say the things that I could, cause I have my own shit. I own my own shit. If this doesn't prove to you, like years and years ago, I, I was heavy on Facebook. And then Facebook, my group just disappeared one day. Then it came back like two years later. And I'm like, and ever since that happened, uh, this group was making me a lot of money. I've not built anything else on Facebook. Instagram, I had Savage Finance. It was up to 26,000 followers. 
And because all of these folks, and I put up one post, I didn't get a warning, nothing, just completely gone. And I'm just sitting there like, but nothing has happened to my stuff. These people cannot contact. They, they can't, they can't, real, they can't do nothing. And I'm learning. I am learning. And to a degree, YouTube is my thing. It's because, you know, as long as there's a, as long as you don't do certain things, YouTube will not cancel your account. Um, if you notice the content's all been about business, leveling up and stuff, I'm going to get to the more saucy stuff. Um, in a minute, but if this isn't proof positive, why you need to own your own shit. If I was on Facebook and this happened, who knows what would have happened? See, my money didn't stop because I get my money from my own platforms. And I get a little bit of, you know, like six to 10,000 a month from YouTube, a little bit of money. So one of the things that I want you guys to understand, be successful, be happy, and work on becoming an owner. Work on becoming an owner because like a whole bunch of folks thought that I was gonna be, I was gonna tumble. There were a lot of people like, Glenn is gone, he's going to jail, it's over, he gonna need the money, he got all these lawsuits. None of that has happened. You want to know why? First of all, I ain't do anything that would put me in jail. That's the first thing. And the second thing is I own my own stuff. That I cannot emphasize how important that is to you. So guys, we got a lot of training coming up. What I'm going to do I don't know if I'm going to put that video at the front. I'm going to put that video at the end of this video. So be sure to watch the video that's after this one. We'll be talking about the training that's going to go down this Sunday, 5 p.m. And we're going to be talking about resale. And that's going to, and I'm going to start leveling you guys up. So go ahead, watch that video, and I will see you guys in the next one. It's going to start right now. What's going on guys? Glendon Cameron again with Savage Money. And I got some good news for you. Right now, there are many people who are trying to sell you a course on how to do maybe Google Maps or how to do Instagram or, and essentially these things are not easy. What if I told you there was a business model that you could start cheaply a business model that you could start immediately and a business model where you can make $1,500 to $5,000 per month with minimum training within the next 90 days. How does that sound to you? How does that really sound to you? Because I'm about to tell you something. Resale literally changed my life. I used to be in the storage auction business, which is very different. I would, we'll, we'll get into that. But this is something that happened to me. And the video is on my main channel. I was out in Conyers, right? And I was at an auction and I bought a safe for $1. And, you know, everyone laughed because if you're in the storage auction business, typically, Safes don't have a lot of, uh, safes are usually empty or they contain useless, non-valuable junk, right? So I bought this safe for a dollar and it was, was a sealed bid. A sealed bid is where you write your bid down. There is uh, outcry bids where going once, $50, $60, $70, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $100, $
and I had my cargo van out there and I loaded up the safe and there was some other stuff. There was an antique bed and it, there really wasn't much in the unit. So I, I get to my partner's house where we had the tools and I'm working and I'm working for like three hours breaking into this safe. And then I pull out this um, satin thing and I open it up and there's this beautiful estate brooch, well, necklace. I got $30,000 for the estate jewelry. $30,000, emeralds, diamonds, all this other stuff. Uh, there was some African uh, cougarans, there was Morgan silver dollars, there was three antique guns, and some other goodies, some other goodies. So from $1, I made $60,000 plus, and I will talk about the plus. I still have the cougarans, and I had 100 cougarans. Google the price of an African cougarand. So once I sell those cougarans, I would have made close to $200,000 off of this $1 investment. Now, that's the extremely the tip top, that's super lucky, that's super fortunate. That ain't gonna happen every day. But if you're in the resale business, it is something that's going to happen sooner or later. You're gonna buy something super cheap and you're gonna sell it for a lot of money. Now, typically, this is how I made money. If I spent a hundred bucks on a storage unit, and if I can make 500 bucks, that was a win, because that was five times my money. So typically, most of the units that I bought, if I bought them correctly, they went from, if I, if I spent 300, I made 1200. If I spent 1200, I made four or 5,000. And that's the majority of the units. About 70% of the units were in that range where if I spent a dollar, I would make four to $5 back. And then there was another collection of units where I could spend maybe a thousand and I make 10, 12, 15,000. And then there was a really small segment of the unit where I would spend whatever and make damn near a hundred times whatever I spent. Now, one of the things that we're getting ready to do, and we're gonna have a training this Sunday on how to do resale. So you're only gonna go below and get into Hustlers University because I'm gonna teach you how to hustle. And this is something you can start with 50 or 100 bucks. Doesn't take a lot of money. And I'm gonna tell you because there are many people here on YouTube who do resale. They go to Goodwill, they go to garage sales, I'm going to tell you how you, I'm going to teach you how to really get better bang for your buck. This is something else I used to do. With the storage auctions, sometimes there wouldn't be anything out there, right? So what I would do is I would put an ad, I would go through Craigslist and I would go to the garage sales before they had a garage sale. And I was like, why would you go to the garage sale before they had a garage sale? Because essentially I would try to buy everything. Once I went to this lady's house, they were having an estate sale and I went and I got and I looked at it. And once again, this is where you really makes a lot of money, make a lot of money. So I'm looking around the house and I started asking her questions because you got to be a probing person. And I was like, do you have anything else for sale? She said, there's a bunch of crap in the basement. Well, let's go check it out. So we go to the basement. Oh my God, Becky, Duncan Fife table. Antis galore. And that's like, you want you want, really, want all this gone too? And I told her, I would give you 5,000 for everything in the house. And she said, excuse me? I would give you $5,000 for everything in the house. Just give me three to four days to get it cleaned out. And I'll take everything. She said, you got a deal. So I had 5,000 on me, put $5,000 out. She gave me the key to the house. She said, oh man, this is a blessing because we just want to sell the house, right? So I spent $5,000 for all of the antiques in the basement and everything upstairs that they were going to have at the estate sale, right? I take that Duncan Fife table with me that day. It was a Duncan Fife drop leaf table, right? With six chairs that were in great condition. They weren't rocking. They weren't rickety. I put that in my shop and the first six days, I sold that set for $3,000. I've only spent 5,000 and I already got 3,000 of my money back, right? 
and then the other wardrobes and the other antiques collectively sold for about forty thousand dollars than the other stuff so i spent five and i made close to seventy thousand dollars so there's a whole bunch of things that we're going to talk about because i'm going to teach you guys how to resell you can get into the antiques you can get into collectibles you can get into everyday stuff essentially you can resell virtually anything and we're going to start doing that in hustlers university i'm going to create a new training and it's going to start sunday so what you want to do is go below and enroll in hustlers university and there's a schematic of things that you need to do things you need to get into because we're getting ready to rock and roll because one of the things I understand with the corporate papers is that's for someone who has a business and has cash flow. And if you're a rookie or beginner and you've never had a business, it, it could just be too much. So one of the things that I'm going to do is start doing a lot of beginner friendly training. I'm going to do a lot of things where I can help you school up because like guys, I started off just like you. I had a regular job. There was nothing special about me. And I got in, you know, I'm gonna tell you how I got into resale. I used to sell commercial office furniture, which was the best job I've ever had in my life. My best year, I made 400,000. And while I was selling commercial office furniture, I had a client that said, if you would sell our used furniture, we will buy new furniture from you. And I said, bet. And I go to my boss and he says, we don't do that. And I was like, you don't do that. So I created GC Solutions, created my LLC, had a written contract with the client, and I started selling new stuff. And I made like $250,000 my first year in my, with my business, 250. This wasn't my job income. It was just selling their furniture because they had cubicles, they had a L de L shaped desk. They had a lot of furniture. And I, it took me about a year to sell most of it. And I got 50% of whatever I sold. So then I transitioned out of that because when I started my, you know, GC Solutions, I went from used furniture trying to sell new furniture. And I fell on my ass. I did 1.5 million in sales, but I made so many mistakes, so many cost overruns. I only had like a $40,000 profit, which ain't good off 1.5 million. It ain't good at all. And I remember that's like this used stuff had a better profit margin. So I went to the newspaper and that's how I got introduced to storage auctions. And it literally changed my life. So I'm going to teach you guys because here's the thing. As you guys know, I've moved and I've been selling a lot of stuff on Craigslist. I've been selling a lot of stuff on Facebook Marketplace. Most people are not professional salespeople. Most people just throw some shit up on Facebook or Craigslist, and I'm gonna teach you how to take your pictures, I'm gonna teach you how to set your titles up, and I'm gonna teach you the little tricks that I use because I sold, I sold a sofa set, a sofa and chair for $850. I had that sofa set for 10 years. I paid 2,700 for it, brand new. Then I sold a washer and dryer that I actually paid. I told them I paid $1,600, right? I actually only paid uh, $1,200 and I sold it for $750. Actually, $850 because I included delivery. And one of the things that I'm going to teach you how to do, because once again, guys, we're about to enter the global reset. So if you're not hustling, because I'm going to be honest with you, you're not quitting your job anytime soon. There are many people that will lead you to believe that you can enroll in their course and their program, you can quit your job. Uh, you're not quitting your job. This is to make your life better. Let's say, let's say your name is Ed, and Ed, you're making $35,000 a year. And you're enrolling Hustlers University, and in 90 days, you're making $1,500 per month consistently, which is $18,000 a year. Guess what you just did, Ed? You just gave yourself a 50% raise on your income. 50%. Then once you get good after a year, you should be hitting that $5,000 per month mark. And here's the thing. Once you get it set up, once you get your processes and systems together, it doesn't take a lot of time. In the beginning, it will take a lot of time because you've you're got to train, you got to learn things, you don't know what you're doing. But I have made, I'm going to make 
about $30,000 selling stuff that I don't need. Like I had a camera and I'm going to tell you why I'm selling the camera. I had a Sony A9, which I just used for YouTube, but I have this new Sony, which has an unlimited record limit. And I have another Sony right there with, cause I can speak for 30, 40 minutes with the Sony A9. It cuts off at 30 minutes and it's just annoying. And it's a good camera. It has only 352 uh, exposures. And those shutters are good for like 500,000 ac ac activations. So that's like a brand new camera that you can get really, really cheap that's in great condition. And I'm selling that on eBay. So we're going to talk about eBay. We're going to talk about Craigslist. We're going to talk about Facebook Marketplace. Things to make you stand out to become a professional seller. Because guys, let me tell you a story. Years and years ago, there was this guy named Morris. And Morris bought my storage auction book. And Morris was in the storage auction game. He was in my Facebook group. I had everything and he was in it about two years. And then I get this email from him. Morris is like, hey, Glendon, um, I just got laid off. I was like, man, sorry to hear that. He said, don't be. He said, I make more money because Morris had been doing this two years with my storage auction business than I do with my full time job. So I'm going to get a package and I'm going to get unemployment and I'm going to have more time to go to more auctions. So Morris was already had replaced his job income with the storage auction business income two years. So essentially what we're going to do is position you to make moves in the future. Like once again, you're not quitting your job no time soon. It's probably going to take you six months to a year to really get rolling. And then once you hit that $5,000 mark, then we can start talking about quitting our job or getting into other businesses. But once again, you got to walk before you can, you, you, you got to crawl before you can walk and you got to walk before you can run. So this is what we're getting ready to do. This Sunday, we're going to have the first live webinar on resale. And I'm going to break down the categories. I'm going to break it down like no one else. Cause you know, I typically have been doing this YouTube thing and online course things, but I am really, really good at resale. I've been able to sell used products. And one of the things is all my stuff I'm selling is in perfect condition. It's not abused. It's not messed up. It's not trashed. It's in perfect condition. So you will be learning from the master. And once again, with the 90 days, 1500 to 5,000. And here's something else. Resale does amazingly well in a recession. Bad economics, resale does, um, it does better. Resale does well year round, but when the economy goes in the crapper, resale really takes off because people are looking to stretch their money, to stretch their, to, to get more bang for their buck. So guys, this is going to be, you know, because one of the things is, and let's have this conversation. I don't start businesses that I don't enjoy because I'm in that position, but you you got to start making some extra money. And I feel that this is the perfect way for you to start making extra money for you to start increasing your cash flow and to start doing things like paying cash for your car, getting your long term emergency fund, getting your short term emergency fund, because this extra income, once again, I'm going to teach you how to segment this income because you don't have it right so once you start making this 1500 first thing we're going to do is we're going to get that long-term emergency fund and then we're going to get that short-term emergency fund and then we're going to start getting rid of these car payments and all this other stuff so there's a whole bunch of stuff that's about to go down so go below first link in the comments and it's in the description you can enroll in hustlers university you can pay a thousand bucks that gets you in one and done or you can pay a hundred bucks a month or you can pay 50 bucks a month. So once again, you can go ahead and get into Hustlers University. And once, once again, I'm, I'm going to teach you some serious tricks because in my resale business, at the height of our resale business, we were doing about hundred K a month. That's a partner. I had a partner. We had a warehouse. At one point we had two stores, but we shut down the stores and we ran all of our operations out of the warehouse and we used eBay, Amazon and Craigslist. Those were our distribution channels. And on Saturday, our fourth distribution channel, which was the upscale garage sale, 
we would sell stuff and we would just blow out all the stuff we couldn't sell online. We would sell it for a dollar. Dollar. I had a 10,000 square foot warehouse. So this is one of the best ways that you guys can make some money. One of the best ways that you can literally get to 1500 bucks within 90 days and to get to 5,000 within a year. If in a year, once you, you learn how to do some things and once you learn how to shop, you want, you make your money when you buy. So we're going to teach you how to buy. I'm going to teach you how to negotiate. I'm going to teach you how to make deals. So there's going to be a lot. This is going to be a new course in Hustlers University, and it will be attached to H under Hustler, let's see, H undergrad, Hustlers undergrad. So go ahead. And once again, if you want to transition to the corporate papers, whatever you pay for H undergrad, you will get a coupon for that amount off and you can roll into the corporate papers. There's a lot of stuff that's coming. So guys, jump in. Once again, this Sunday, 5 p.m., we are going to be doing our first live training. Once again, this Sunday, 5 p.m. So go ahead, get in the corporate papers now, and I will see you Sunday.